My next guest clearly does not get paid by the hour as uh, Kyle Dawkins is coming off a first round a submission victory over Jamie Pickett, literally at the last second, UFC Vegas 48. Uh, Kyle, how's it going, man? It's going good. Uh, Saturday went good. Uh, took no damage, so I feel good. Before we talk about the performance itself, uh, take me through sort of leading up to the fight. Another situation with an opponent. Uh, I think we did our interview. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. And then I heard like shortly after that, that Julian was out. When did you find out? Like how quickly uh, did you know that uh, you were going to have to find another opponent? Yeah, I think we talked on Monday. And then I yeah. think that like well, like 7 p.m. that same Monday, I found out that he was hurt. And yeah. uh, it was right before I went to the, I was at the gym. I got to the gym. I saw my manager had called me. So I called him back. You know, every, anytime he calls me, it's always like something, something's up. So uh, I called him back. He said Julian was hurt. And I said, all right, well, let me know who they find. Continue training. Uh, thir- uh, Tuesday, I had a training at 11 a.m. Uh, I got done that around 1230. And I received a phone call from my manager again. Called him back. Figured, said that uh, Jamie Pickett was there and available. And I said, all right, cool. And he said that he wanted to take the fight at 195 pounds as opposed to 85 just because – um, he recently just fought and whatnot. Um, so I said, okay, I mean, I tried to get it at 190 just to try to drain him out a little bit more than I could have. Um, mm-hmm. But we took the fight at 95 because they weren't budging. And it, it, it went well as, as uh, obviously, you know, Saturday went. Yeah, no, it certainly did. And uh, was was part of you like, oh, no, not again. I'm going to have a fight fallout. Like, did that ever cross your mind? Just because we talked about this in the last interview. Like, your 2021 was so weird with opponent switch-ups. Yeah, no, I'm kind of numb to it now, honestly. Like, anytime I, I'm, I'm more surprised, in my opinion, I'm like more surprised when I do get a fight and the fight actually goes through as opposed to when fighters fall out, um, just based off of like the last year that I've had. Um, so, anytime that somebody calls and, and pulls out of the fight or whatnot, you know, it's, I'm kind of numb to it. I'm just like, all right, like, whoever they have next, I'm going to fight. Like, just hopefully somebody shows up because I'm going to show up no matter what. So, yeah. Did it add a little bit more being the co main event? I know that's always nice to get that extra attention. Yeah, I was really surprised that they kept me at the co-main event. Um, I think I said this in the post-fight thing. I'd assumed that they would have put the Buckley um, Al Hassan fight as co-main event just because those guys knocking everybody out. Um, but yeah, I was I was surprised that I stayed co-main event. It was good to get that exposure, obviously. But again, in, in my in my opinion, like the fight is just a fight. If I was the main event or the first fight of the night, it's just a fight to me. It doesn't really matter where I'm placed on the card. Correct me if I'm wrong. First submission win since February of 2020. Uh, how good did it feel to, to get at your first finish in the UFC? That must have been nice. Yeah, it felt good. It was a big relief. It was a huge relief just getting uh, just getting the, the victory, honestly. Um, but yeah, if, it's always better when you can finish the fight and, and get out of there because, you, like you said, you don't get paid by the minute in there. So it's always great. Yeah, and uh, I think it's his first submission loss since July of 2017. Uh, did you feel like once you had that choke on that it was game over? Because I know that's, uh, you know, you had a great ground game, obviously. No, I, uh, when, I, when I had locked the choke up, it was a bit shallow. Um, I wasn't deep and I wasn't like super deep. I felt like it was kind of on his chin. Um, and then I think it was like my corner was yelling at me saying there was like 12 seconds left or something. And I assume that he heard there was 12 seconds left. And uh as soon as they said that, my my I, I started like trying to get like a deeper and deeper choke, and I felt like my form had went underneath his chin onto his neck. So I said, "I'm just going to squeeze as long as I can until until the end of the round because if my arm my arms are going to gas out because I constantly do it in training, so it's perfectly fine with me. Um, but I want him to be worried, so I just constantly squeeze, and and luckily he tapped at the last like half second left, so it was good. Did, were you confident they were going to make the win stick, or is part of you thinking this is not Kevin Holland all over again? Yeah, no, I thought there was going to be a bit of controversy. I wasn't sure. That's why I turned to Herb right as soon as as soon as the bell rang, and I was like, "Yo, he was tapping." And, and I look up at Herb, and Herb said, "No, yeah, he tapped. The fight's over." And I was like, "All right, cool. Like it was great." But I was assuming there was going to be controversy, but there wasn't. You know, it, it's 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 good. It's good that there's that. It's it's good to just get the victory. Yeah. So how do you celebrate after a win like that? Again, opponent switch up. You get a first round finish. You got to be feeling pretty good on Saturday. Yeah, we went out to uh, Wahlburgers. I got a burger and some fries. Uh, we walked the strip for a little bit. And then I went. I was back in bed by like 1130, 11, 1130 that night. And yeah. uh, I got home around 10 o'clock last night. So. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for doing this yeah. today. I didn't realize it was uh, you got home so late. So that, that's good. Uh, did anyone did anyone win any money on your fight? And the reason I bring that up is because I know you were the favorite, but I think like the submission prop or something or even the first round prop would have been a little bit higher just because most of your fights have gone the distance. Uh, did anyone DM you that there are any of their betting slips? Yeah, a lot of the people, a lot of people said that they had parlays of me winning, and that was good. A um, couple of guys had me winning at submission, and then there was two guys. I forget who it was. I think it was like my my fiance's friends. They had uh, me winning in the second round, so they were pissed off that I didn't win <laughs> in the second round, and that the fight went to the to the first round. So, oh well. <laughs> 
Any uh, any any feedback from the UFC? I mean, they got to be thrilled. Co-main event, you come through, you, you get a finish like that. As you have you heard anything from your manager? I, I know, obviously, we're only a few days removed here. Uh, the only thing I heard was that, that you know Mick and them, them were impressed. Uh, they were very uh, you know just impressed with my performance, and I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for being the co-main event. Obviously, um, I got the performance in the night, which is another spectacular thing in my opinion. Um, and just happening in my life right now, it's just everything's on the up and up so far. So yeah, everything's good. Is that going to pay for the wedding, or what? What's uh, what's the performance of the night? Uh, where, where are you putting that money into? Uh, we're gonna we're probably gonna put it in towards our house, probably towards our house or, or something like that. Because um, we, you know, obviously the mortgage, but I want to get the house paid off with as fast as I as fast and uh, as quick as possible. So. Yeah, no, that's super smart there. And then I know, obviously, after the fight you talked about, and I think most people know, Chris has got his big fight coming up against Curtis Blade, so the focus is on him. That's typically how you guys do your camps, right? If you have a fight, you'll focus on you. If, if he's got a fight coming up, so I'm assuming any time after that would be sort of good to go to have your, your next fight, because he fights next month. Yeah, I mean, hopefully uh, uh, in May, maybe May 7th is a nice card. I know it's the Gaethje, there's a Gaethje and the, uh, the, I think it's Jan's on that card, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's a that's a good card. I mean, I think I'm sure it's gonna be in front of fans, so that would always be nice. But uh, yeah, May seventh or the fourteenth, I'm, I'm I'm available. Okay. Any opponents in mind? Because you know you've been picking up some nice. I mean, the second UFC win, right? Uh, you did so impressively. Pickett's a guy that you know a lot of people haven't been able to finish. Is is there sort of an opponent in mind, or you just sort of hey, coaches, manager, you you guys handle that? No, I leave that to my to my manager. Um, I kind of wanted to run that Julian fight back, but you know he's kind of questionable you know i'm not really sure when he's going to be able to get back um and he's not really a guy like throughout my camp and stuff like that i was thinking this as well you know he's not really a guy that's kind of dependent upon making it to the fight he either gets hurt or he doesn't make weight or or there's issues other than that um but yeah i mean that would be a fight that would be nice um i saw somebody posted me against uh christoph jocko i think that would be a really good matchup um I, again i don't want to rush to 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 uh get like a bigger name like a huge name or anything like that um I'm fine with working my way up and just getting the experience that I need. Um, again, I only have 14 fights as of right now, right? Yeah, 14 yeah. fights. So yeah, I mean, anytime I can get in there and just get my uh, get my experience, I'm fine with that. Um, but I like that Jocko fight. I think that would be a good matchup. Um, but yeah, those are the two names that that are kind of on my mind right now. Okay, style wise, how do you look at that fight with Jocko? Obviously, he's very well rounded, like yourself. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's very good. He'll be a good test on the feet because he's got really good striking. Um, he also has kind of very good takedown defense as well. So I think that would be a very good challenge uh, for somebody like me. And uh, I think I pose a good threat against him um, as far as my takedown offense and um, my grappling. But okay. yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to go against somebody that would, that would be a good striker and uh, somebody that has very good takedown defense just to kind of test myself again. I'll throw out another name there. And again, you're not calling anyone out. It's me making the suggestion, but uh, kind of a notable name that's not ranked. Uh, Ian Heinish, is that a fight you would be interested in just because, you know, he's been in the UFC for a while. He was ranked at one point. Now he's not. Um, I know he's lost by submission. So maybe that's uh, enticing for you. Is, is there any sort of interest in a fight uh, matchup like that? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I know he's a known guy. He fought um, he fought Gaslam and Ima Vav, So he's got some names behind them. So a guy like that, that you can go out there and beat um, and you can just show that you're one of the guys that, that beat him and he's got two other ranked guys that, that beat him as well. Um, that'd be a good fight. He's a very good wrestler. He seems like he's very physically strong and strong on top. So I think that would be a good test as well. And again, I'm open to anybody who, that they, that they offer me um, yeah. just as long as I get a full camp. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. We got to talk about the post fight speech with uh, Tony Ferguson. Uh, were, were you happy with that? I thought I, I knew what you were trying to say. I thought it came out well, but it's, I don't think people realize like how tough it is to like, to, especially someone who does interviews all the time, like to do something on the spot like that, especially after you just fought, like I, I knew what you were saying, but I know it didn't probably come across the, the, the best way you wanted to. What, what, how would you rate your post fight speech? No, nah, my, my that post fight <laughs> speech was like one or two, man. My, <laughs> I said it, I said it perfectly in my brain, but the way it came out of my mouth didn't, didn't, say it at all what i wanted to say um it was it was last minute that's true um my one corner man told me that i should i should try to get a fight with weidman um if he was coming back or whatnot Um, okay yeah but but i figured i was just like i I don't know if i want to call anybody out right now but i'll make it seem like i want to call out somebody because they have a nickname that i want um he has more darts chokes than i do in in the ufc uh octagon but i feel like he's more of he has a nickname that's like el kukui and he has a bunch of other nicknames that he likes um, so I, I want to steal that Darts Knight um, nickname. Um, is, is, has Tony responded at all on social media? Have you heard any chatter since that call out, or did he not even acknowledge it? No, I just I just hear everybody's everybody's liking the the, the nickname itself. Um, 
the UFC took it and ran with it. They posted that that a new Dark Knight emerges or whatever. That was pretty sweet to see them post that. Um, but I didn't see anything from Tony or whatnot. But I'm sure eventually, if I see him or something like that, I'll say something. Now, let me let me ask you this though. You know, Tony's a bit of a different guy, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But are you worried he might take it the wrong way and, and get upset with you? Like, is, did that cross your mind at all after doing it? Because you never know, right? Nah, nah. I would assume it's just all, all fun and games. But I mean, I mean, hopefully he's not mad at me or anything like that. I mean, I was just saying it just to kind of be funny, you know. I know that yeah. he's got his nicknames and whatnot, and he always posts that. But I, I feel like I can run with it. I mean, Tabology, Tabology already put it up as my nickname, so this is it's. It seems like it's it's something it's got that some legs, yeah. Hitting off, yeah. Yeah. Off, so. No, I agree with that. Um, what about the rest of the week? Obviously, I'm sure you're back in the gym, probably doing some light stuff. But what's uh, what's on the agenda the rest of the week? I'm sure some good food too. Yeah. Uh, today uh, I took off this morning from strength and conditioning. Um, I usually just take one or two days off afterwards because the flight on Sundays is killer. Oh, like, it sucks. Uh, we usually, I've done that before because I used to. I used to live in yeah. Toronto, so I used to uh, in going from east to west, right? Like yeah. uh, going from Vegas, it, it, it's it's a it's a long flight, right? It adds up. I don't yeah. know how long it is for you, but it's probably similar. So it, it's weird from when I fly to Vegas, it's five hours, but when we fly home, it's like three and a half. So it's like very odd and weird. I guess because of the tailwind and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I tried to get an early flight out Sunday. I try to get as early as I can on Sunday just so yeah. I have the rest of the day because the three hour difference um, that the East Coast is ahead. Uh, but yesterday we flew, we left Vegas at one thirty, and I, I landed in Philly at, at 10 o'clock at night. So it's like my whole day is washed and I'm home wide awake on at 11 o'clock at night. So I'm up all night. Uh, the sleep schedule was all jacked up, even though it's just one day. But yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. Uh, uh, today, I took off strength and conditioning this morning. Uh, tonight, I'll be at the gym, obviously. Uh, I don't really have any bumps or bruises. I have a little bruise on my shin, but that's about it. Um, and it's just back to hard work that I have to do. Um, this is my day job. This is my, my full-time job that I have. So I can't take any more than one or two days off because uh, I have to get back in there and just keep improving that I possibly can and just be the best that I can. So I'll be in there getting my brother ready, getting uh, just making sure my body's in shape. And uh, whenever I get the call, I get the call. Uh, last thing, I don't know if you caught it, and this isn't me uh, promoting my own interview, but did you see when I interviewed Chris last week that Habib walked by and he kind of was like, oh, that's Habib. I don't know if you caught that. It was pretty funny just seeing him. You know, he's headlining a card, but here he sees Habib and he's kind of starstruck. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I actually shook hands with Habib after the fight because I walked over to him and I said I was trying to do the wrist control and I couldn't yeah. get it. Out when mm -hmm. I was in the cage, I went over and said something to him, like just 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 saying what's up to him and stuff. And I was yeah. like, I was trying to do the wrist control during the fight, it didn't work. And then after I got my hand raised, I walked out, and he got up out of his chair and turned towards me, shook my hand, and he was like trying to explain like about the hips. I have to get my hips down. I have to get my hips heavy to 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 get that wrist control and whatnot. And I was like, man, Khabib just told me that, I, like, just tried to help me with my wrist control, and I was like, that's pretty sweet. But yeah, I was just as starstruck as my I saw my brother was too. But, well, yeah. How cool is that, though? Like, you know, you just finished your fight and, and here he is, like, you know, taking the time to teach you something. And, uh, you know, just I think it just shows what type of guy he is, because I don't think every fighter would do that. Right. No. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of guys would just kind of blow you off. But no, it's it's it, it was crazy. And he's a lot bigger in person, too. That's another thing that, like, people don't really realize. Um, and then, like, I was in the cage and uh, when we were getting announced before the fight and I looked over at Pickett and I saw it down like to like Pickett's like left was where like Dana Khabib and then another guy was standing there and I saw him and he had a, he had a Morbius shirt on and I was looking at him and I was like, Oh shit, that's Jared Leto. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I, don't worry about, don't worry about this. Don't worry about those guys just sitting there. I got, I got to got a fight in front of me and just run through this guy and then I can say what's up to them afterwards. But yeah, it was pretty wild seeing Jared Leto and uh, Khabib right next to each other, uh, like right across the cage from me. Not a bad night at the office, Kyle. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. Again, I know this is uh, your day off and want to you know, enjoy it, so I always appreciate the time. Uh, if there's anyone you want to thank, sponsors, social media, you name it, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, just everybody as usual. Uh, Fuel Hunt, here's the clothing line that I have uh, with my brother. Like We have like, a little collaboration with them. Um, Performance Meal Prep is another guy, uh, another people that have been you know, helping me out with food and stuff. Uh, Primal Nutrition is a supplement company in Philly. Uh, just everybody at the gym, I'm very thankful for everybody. And uh I can't wait to go out there and just put on another performance like I did this uh, past Saturday.